Whiskey Throttle Spotlight is brought to you by Yamaha, the leaders in the power sports industry. Join the Blue Crew today. By Nihilo Concepts, boost your bike's performance, reliability, and aesthetics with Nihilo products. Flow Vision, high performance goggles and eyewear. And by Complete Racing Solutions, your one stop shop for human performance and wellness. Everybody, it's Ping, and I'm out here at the hollowed ground of the goat farm, Ricky Carmichael's old training facility. You can see the iconic water truck behind us that's uh, still runs, but just barely. Uh, but it's a, a stark reminder that there was a lot of championships won at this place. And I got invited down by the Star Racing Yamaha guys to see the new facility, ride the new track. They've redone it, reworked it. And uh, I said, well, can I ride a bike while I'm out there? And they said, yeah, well, maybe we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I showed up. And Bobby and Brad and Jeremy and the boys had a bike with my number on it. It's actually uh, Cooper, Justin Cooper's bike, but uh, they let me take some laps on it today. And this was absolutely incredible. You know, we've heard all the rumors about how good these bikes are. You've seen them pull hole shot after hole shot. And when I first jumped on it, I'm expecting it to be fast. And I've ridden some other factory bikes, so I've got some reference. And this thing exceeded every expectation I had. Um, and kind of what I explained in terms of the engine, we'll start there because that's always what it is uh, touted for. You know, there's, there's some factory bikes that have a really strong bottom and a good mid and top. And there's others, the Austrian brand that, that has decent bottom and it's pretty good middle and then a really good top. But I have never ridden a 250 that has incredible horsepower and torque numbers across the board. There's no place this thing doesn't make eye popping horsepower. And, I, I, I just came in, I said, you guys are cheating. It's unbelievable. Um, I, I would kept playing with gearing. Like I would come out of turns in second like you normally would. And I thought, man, I wonder if it'll pull third. And I'd come into it in third and just leave the clutch alone and roll it on. You can ride it just like a 450. It was incredible. The torque numbers are incredible. And um, they said they do have an issue with some of their guys over revving it. And I'm like, they don't need to. I'm 170 pounds. Most of them are 135 to 145. I can't even imagine what it feels like with them on it. So just incredible horsepower and torque numbers everywhere. Like there is no weak spot to this engine. There's no place, in my opinion, you could make it better. It's like a 450, but better, more rideable. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, the rest of the bike, super comfortable. I, Justin and I are similar in stature. So where he had his bars, I, I adjusted his clutch lever up a tiny bit. That was it. I didn't touch anything else and it was really comfortable for me. Nice, comfy seat. Uh, I don't know if this is aftermarket, but uh, decor visuals cover and just everything felt really comfortable. Great foot peg positioning and, and the, the cockpit to me felt great. I love these uh, grips, half waffle pro tapers on here. Um, so just the cockpit and the riding position of it was perfect for me. The suspension, again, he's a little bit lighter than I am, but he's significantly faster. So we gave it a shot, we set sag, and honestly, I, we, we opened up High speed compression, about a turn, half a turn to a turn. And just to get, I, I like my bikes to squat a little in the back. It's just a, a personal preference of mine. That's the only change we made to the shock. And then the fork, he made a little adjustment. This is an air fork, which I was surprised to hear pretty much every championship they've won has been on an air fork. And so I was chatting with the crew here a little bit about it. And I said, I, I just, they always feel like they have a little bit of a crust to them. And, and until you get through that, it's, there's more feedback than I'd like. A spring gives me this really nice, comfortable initial I don't mind the action of the spring fork once I'm into it, or the air fork, but it's, it's just a harder crust up top. And they, they agreed, they said that's something they fight. But when you get to tracks where it's stickier and deeper, 
it works better. It, it's, a, it's a more positive feel where a spring feels kind of mushy and wallowy. This will hold up and feel a lot better. So he said, Hangtown, Spala, some of those harder tracks, maybe even Colorado, this isn't maybe quite as good, but once they get back east, then it's really an advantage for them. So really interesting stuff. And, and they've got both. Guys can swap back and forth and, and they do. In fact, Eli made a change from Paula to Hangtown. So uh, lots of options that they have. I think that's one of the things that makes this team so incredible. So anyway, suspension in all, very balanced for me, very comfortable, incredibly stable. This thing never swapped, kicked, did anything funny on me at all. And they did groom part of the track, but they left some rough stuff too. And I, you know, hitting those big braking bumps, when you're used to a certain kind of suspension, I'm coming in going, okay, that's gonna pop me up pretty good. And you brace for it. And this bike just goes, doo -doo, just Cadillac. Um, and it is typical race suspension where when I was cruising around just shooting photos and stuff, it felt kind of firm, like it wasn't really working well. And then once you start pushing it a little harder, the harder you push it, the better it works. Uh, that's typical race suspension. It's just too firm unless you're pushing hard. So that was true in this case as well. Um, I noticed something about his brake, and the guys, this is all personal preference. It's a little mushier. It's just not as sensitive. I had to really grab on it to stop it. And they said, that's kind of how Justin likes it. He doesn't want it too grabby. Just something I noticed they have, obviously, they can throw steel braided lines on, different rate lever ratios, so they can make it however you want it. His is just a little spongier, which is a specific feel to him. But everything else, it just felt like home. And um, the thing that really jumps out at me, yes, it turns great, it handles great, the cockpit is comfortable, but the horsepower is unreal, absolutely unreal. I, I, I just went in and I just said, you guys are cheating. It's amazing, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. Um, and riding the goat farm, you know, I came back here and stayed with Ricky in 1997 when we were pro circuit teammates. It was a different facility. He didn't own this place. It was another place. Uh, the Tims, they, they called it something different. And uh, it was just as hot and humid and miserable, but this facility is so much cooler. Um, not only the old cabin that Ricky used to stay in, which is iconic, but they've improved the tracks. They've added things, added dirt. And this is like the most, uh, incredible, well thought out facility. If you want to be a professional racer, this is the spot to be. So uh, I don't think that's a mystery. These guys have won six of the last seven Supercross titles uh, in 250 class, and um, now they're starting a, a pretty dang good run in the 450 class as well, winning you know the last two or three. So um, I just really want to thank Bobby and Brad and Jeremy and all the guys here, the entire crew at Star Racing Yamaha. What an awesome experience. Thank you to Yamaha for, for bringing us out. Um, something I'll never forget. So I don't know what to tell the other race teams. Um, good luck, best wishes. I don't know how you're ever gonna beat these guys off the line. Um, absolutely incredible motorcycle. So thank you guys for the opportunity. Thanks for watching.